Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. We're doing a little bit of excavation today, specifically trenching for an electric line in the woods way over the ridge there. We've done a little clearing in a previous video with this job. So this is kind of cool. They've actually got a building up already. We can see how that building site's progressing. We are in the brand new, well, 56 hours, Hyundai HX85A. It's a 2021 with the work brew, work brow. I'm not 100% sure if you could Google that and tell me work brew or brow film assembly on it and i'm pretty excited said the path would be marked with white flags that's a white flag I'm assuming they're gonna set a pole here we started you can see the Subaru way down there but that's where the pole is gonna go somewhere through these woods is that other building site that we cleared out we've got to get a path to it for the utility line for the electric line okay Okay, okay, so I know we got to get at least this far. Oh. What an adventure, huh? Assuming that orange flag is probably property. There's another white flag. And there's an old county road up here, which is why the water line runs through this ridge. The county road used to come right through here. And if I hop down in it, You'll be able to see the cut from the old county abandoned abandoned county road can you see the shape can you see the old banks cut from the old county road that ran through here and he said just drop down in the old county road and then run that up so if you keep looking down that way you can see where the old access or old road used to go that's the direction we came from we're going to that barn right there but i wanted to show you Somewhere, oh, I lost her. She's there. It is. There you go. There's a flush hydrant. And if you were hiking through these woods and you didn't know anything about the history, you would think that is a strange place for a flush hydrant. That's because there's a water main that runs on the top side of what used to be a road. Now, if you want, I'll put a link in the description to the video to where we cleared out and made this barn pad. And a lot of people commented because of the length of the driveway that it's going to cost a fortune to get electric up there and i said just stay tuned it'll all make sense in the long run and this is what i was talking about the water is already from there to there that's not very far and the electric is just on the other side of those trees so we don't actually have to trench up that crazy long driveway if you want to see how long it is and what i'm talking about check out that video like i said i'll put it in the description here's the barn they ended up with though really fit in there nice too fit in there nice heck yeah let's check out the view real quick we got to look at the view here's where we're going to that's gonna be where the transformer pad is at that runs from that to the barn but look at this it is gorgeous up here the ridges in the distance you see that is kentucky we're standing in indiana and then of course you can see the ohio river right there beautiful view Beautiful building spot. So now that we know the route and we know where we're going, let's try out that new thumb. Let's clear some trees and get a path up here. How you doing, bud? There you go.
This is not a good side for when it comes to the trenching part. Come through a lot of rock right there. We've got to get at least four feet deep for this electric line. This should be interesting. be a chance that this rock I'm seeing it's all pretty similar in size that it's all uh, maybe it's the old road base maybe it's an old cobblestone road or something like that I don't know there's a lot of it it's that's all of that underneath the leaves I hope that's all it is it's gonna be a long digging trench if it's gonna be rock four foot down anyway you can see right down through there we got her cleared out pretty nice there's the machine there. And that red stake's where the transformer pad's gonna go. And there we are sitting right there. I don't wanna make it an interstate, but I don't wanna be waddling all over the place either. So we'll pull a little bit of this hill down so I can kinda comfortably get up this. I've got, uh, you can see this drop off this bank right in here. Oh, hold on, let me swing my pointer back over. There we go. You guys can see this drop off this bank right here. So I'm kind of in a, not a tight spot, but it's a handy spot to use the swing boom. That's for sure.
Mike and I had a little debate. He told me, he told me we were going to be running this electric line through the woods. And he said, take the 85 up there and do it. And I said, the 85 is too big of a machine to be out in the woods running a trench. I, just, I would have preferred the 304. It's smaller, I can get in and out of the trees easier. He said, you'll be all right. And I trusted him. It's a good thing I did because I, I just can't get over this. I got to show you guys some things. Look at, I don't know how, ooh, a tape measure. You know what, let me show you this with a tape measure. Let's run this out real quick. Let me show you. That's where we're at. There's 23 feet, a little bit back from it. Now we're measuring from the front glass, but that's what I can hook the tape measure on. So this thing, the reach on this is insane. It's absolutely crazy. But what's really surprising me, not only the reach, but the fact that I can get between these two trees where I'm sitting. I can sit right here in the woods swing over right between these trees which is insane and just for reference i don't listen i don't advise hooking the front glass that's probably not smart but here we are and just for reference that tree's 10 feet away it's pretty close this is crowded all the way in or probably about eight feet and if you really wanted you could slide the swing boom over Get it even closer the point i'm trying to make here is i would have never thought this machine the size of it it's not a huge machine but it's definitely way bigger than the 304 i would have never thought it'd be as maneuverable as it is and nimble can we use the word nimble in the woods i'm flat out impressed and i don't have a partnership with hyundai that's mike's deal not mine so if i didn't like it i'd tell you and uh dead gone it bud pretty impressive taking all the trees we cleared on the way up and uh, packing them with me on the way back down. And I can put them in one consolidated pile down the bottom. Pop up. These are some 
cool looking rocks. Look at that. That looks like a table. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. had just a couple hours today so I'm getting ready to take off but barn is up and around that corner we made it all the way down here and there's the Hyundai and then right down there right here's where we dropped off that bank coming into the woods and then there's the machine so you can see not too much further to go up this they'll have to call the water department so we can cross that line make sure we locate it right and don't uh well, you know, don't make a Friday worse than it's already going to be. But the crazy thing is, the reality of the time frame is, you guys have probably already seen the YouTube yacht be poured if you watched that. But tomorrow's actually Thursday for me, and I'm going to work with my brother on the YouTube yacht, and then Friday morning we're going to pour the YouTube yacht, but we're going to finish this video at the end of the day Friday so I can get this finished and dug for Mike. So if you're new to the channel and you don't know what the YouTube yacht is, it is a steamboat themed and shaped rental cabin that we've been working on. My wife and I are trying to get into the rental cabin vacation rental business. You might want to go check that video out if you haven't seen it. It should have already come out prior to this video, but it's just weird. It's just weird the way YouTube works sometimes. This thing though, I'm telling you, the more I use it, the more I hope he gets one. Just got done pouring the YouTube yacht and just got done accidentally walking into Dirt Perfect's live stream. Whoops, my bad. Anyway, we are back out to finish this trench. Now, we talked about the water line situation where we have to cross the water line. Here's where that water line's at. And we're going right through the woods over there. Now the reason why this is such a big deal is one, it's a main, not a big one. I'm gonna guess it's probably a four inch main. But like we said, it's old enough, there is no tracer wire 
with this water line. When this line was installed, it was way back when they didn't put tracer wire stuff. So we have no way to actually locate it. The water company witched it, which they do with old lines. And they're pretty good at it and they have good luck with it, but we're still not 100% sure if that's where it's at. We don't know how deep it is. We don't know a lot about it. So we did come up with an alternative solution. The water company is on their way out right now. They're supposed to meet me this morning. Well, this afternoon now, I guess, and see if this alternative route will work. And if we're lucky, we can go around it and not have to cross it. That would be the ideal situation. Starting to get in some clay down here. Some of different material than what we've been in. So met with the water company real quick. We came up with the game plan. There are some pretty big ifs there. For instance, if it is where the old timers say it is. Like I said, there's no map where this water line was at. It's old enough, there's no tracer wire. He does know it's a three inch line because he said way back in that ridge, way, way back in that ridge, he had to fix a leak one time on it. So we know where it's at there. And there is that flush hydrant and there's a couple places where they've had to do repairs. So based on where they've had to work on it, they kind of have a rough idea of where it's at. But he did have some pretty funny stories about this water line and some times that people hit it. And I can show you a couple of those spots out here. We'll do that later in the video though. Making great progress down the old wagon road here. You can see we gotta get up this embankment. That's gonna be the next little challenge. the embankment through the trees getting ready to come out into a little bit of a clearing and I'll well, probably have dump a whole bucket there but there you go that's effective so there we are coming out of the woods you see the flags there that is the water company's best guess of where that water main runs a three inch water main originally we were going to dig through that opening and cross that water main. The new plan after talking to the landowner and the water company is we're gonna come through this opening here. It's all the same property owner. Come down along through here. I'm gonna kinda hug this edge. They kinda have a little path right here. I don't wanna trench right down the middle. So we'll hug the edge of it. And we're gonna shoot right up through there and where that driveway is, that is where the power connection will go whenever it ties into there's an underground primary on that road and that's where this power line will tie into that keeps us that keeps us from having to cross that water line which we're all in favor of since nobody really knows where it's at so where we're digging this at we are on top of a ridge there is a state highway on the east side of this ridge down in the bottoms there is another county road on the west side of this ridge that follows a creek along there 
and then there's a county road that runs the ridge. Now the county road used to run the entire length of this ridge, but way back in the day, whenever the federal government was buying up lots of land in this county to make a Hoosier National Forest, they bought a bunch of acreage on that section of the ridge. When they did that, because there were no homesteads back there, there was no other private property or private residence, they were able to petition the county and have that section of county road, the old county road we've been digging down, they were able to have that terminated or made obsolete, whatever you want to say that. And anybody can do that in this county. If you buy property on both sides of the road and you're at the end of that road, you can petition the county to have that section of county road eliminated. But that didn't change where the water main was at. So the three inch main that followed that county road that ran the ridge still went right through here. When they built this house decades ago, the water company told them that it's somewhere in there, but we think you're gonna miss it. Well, they didn't. When they dug the basement, they dug right through the water main that ties into the ridge on that side. It went right through here and they dug right through it. Again, there is no tracer wire, there are no maps. This was just kind of a old guys at the company think it's in this general area. Whenever they broke that water line down at that house, the water company ended up rerouting the main. They dug it up right here, which is why this is here, tied into it here. Came out of the woods. There's the flags we just showed you. There's the house. They went around this side of it, through that opening, and they came out of the woods and rerouted that water main through the field. And if you look way in the distance right there, that is still the county road that exists that runs the rest of the ridge. So the water main keeps going and then ties back in along that section of road that supplies the rest of the ridge with water. But when they built this pond, they still weren't 100% sure where it was at, supposedly. I mean, we've all built ponds, right? They used a pan, and whenever they panned that pond, they ripped the whole daggone thing out of there. And now it goes down around the back side of the dam and then ties in to the main ridge road, right where you saw that truck just drive. That being said, he did say the old line that ran down this opening and used to run down through there where that house is at. Well, it's obviously still there. So we may end up finding the old line and that's okay. I just think it's interesting the way the landscape changes. There used to be a county road that runs this ridge. Now there's not, but the water main is still there supplying people. It's changed its route several times over the years as too. It's just kind of crazy the way all that stuff changes. Build something weird. What have we here? That is the old abandoned water line. Look at that. Oh, isn't she beautiful? I am surprised it's PVC for being as old as he said it was. that is where we're going to stop at for now like we mentioned earlier we still have to cross the road see that stake right there the electric primary runs right down well it shares the trench with the fiber optic so right where that fiber optic mark is it runs right down through here we still have to cross the road and we have to put a pedestal base in here so they can make that connection but we're going to try to do that monday i've got to call them today and just double check that we're good for Monday. 
and then that way we can cross road backfill it and get all this done next week i'm pretty excited about it and here's what we ended up with around here ended up talking to the homeowner they wanted me to hug that side of this opening so i tried to get under that the best i could which i think looks okay and right up there into the woods that'll work just fine i'm sure there's already some comments about not flat bottom bucketing whatever you want to call it smoothing out the bottom of the trench for electric trenches I never really worry about it. If it's a sewer line or a water line, I'll take some more time and run that flat bottom bucket across there and really make it look sharp. But for electric trench, it's a waste of time, at least in my opinion. As far as that machine goes, I'm really impressed. And like I said, it's not my partnership. Not, I have nothing to gain by saying anything on it. I'm really impressed though. That cab is incredibly comfortable for the size of the machine. It is mind boggling how comfortable it is. The power is, almost scary it's got a lot of power you saw it get through those big rocks that was very impressive incredibly balanced very maneuverable the only thing i can't speak on is how well it'll hold up over time because that just takes time you know that's an only time can tell kind of thing it does seem like it's built well it does seem heavy it seems made you know there's some thought into the process but i don't know i can't speak to that so i'm not going to but i will say so far i am pretty impressed with it now let's run to the house this is the same day we poured the youtube yacht we got a couple odds and ends we got to do later in the day. So we did pour this this morning. You guys probably already watched the video if you haven't. And you don't even know the project we're working on. This is called the YouTube Yacht. It's a steamboat themed and uh, shaped rental cabin that we're building. Anyway, typically you do this a little bit earlier in the day, but I did go work for Mike the rest of the day. And I just want to pull these off on the window. And it's just nice if you can get you always end up with some stuff kind of built up on the edges and it's nice if you can get that all chipped off before it gets too crazy hard on you the goal is to get it below the two by four And this doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. It doesn't really matter. It goes under whatever you end up finishing out in here with, whatever kind of casing you decide to use. It's also nice before the concrete gets too crazy. You can go around. And if there's any place where you might have spilled some on the wall, or on a brace, you can go around and get those cleaned up real quick. Really, overall, it's a pretty neat pour job. There's not a lot of spill or cleanup to do, really. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty much ready to go for the next step. The next step on this project is get everything stripped. Like I said, we'll leave these for a couple weeks at least, but I do want to go ahead and get everything else stripped, braces down, and get the backside cleaned up and prepped for the backfill, because that'll be the next thing. Waterproofing, backfill, Subgrade plumbing, backfill on the inside for slab prep. Those are the next steps. Keep this project moving right along. This is more of just a shameless plug for the YouTube Yacht Project. That way, if you're new to the channel and you didn't know what was going on, well, now you know. What kind of a host would I be if I didn't show you topside? Yeah, she looks good. I do appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're having a great whatever it is you're having. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.